This is part B of the review slash new material um, from last week and this week, the May's 18th. So again, we're looking at Columbus Alta, Cinghiale, and Guardia del Corno, Sinistra e Destra. Um, Sinistra being our new option because we really have that with Sorbonne again. Um, but again, you'll see a nice pattern here that it's, it's going to look very, very familiar. Uh, I'll apologize in advance, I'm going to need to be looking at my sheet a few times because there's a lot of material here, lots of things to, uh, a lot of fine details, so I'll make sure I don't miss anything. So that being said, we've already looked at the first four from Codolonga Alta. We've not done Chinky Alta or Anacolonga yet. So from here, from Codolonga Alta, we are going to kind of harass their left, harass them by kind of sniping at the left wrist, the bottom of it. So one, two, punta reversa to the face. Uh, note that I'm not doing this, I'm kind of keeping them in line, because now I want to go to the next thing, which is going to be a cut to the leg. And then again, I'll keep going, do a little reverse over the elbow. So again, one, two, three, four, five, back to guard. So one, two, three, four, five, and just keep moving. As a response to this, we want to transition to Chin Yale, and then we're going to, so very, very brief, uh, very short motion, so we're going to here, to deal with that. So it's just enough to get this out of the way and get my sword in the way. So now my sword's gonna be where their dagger is. And so if they uh, come around with that uh, punta versa, I'm gonna transition to entry and go right into the chest like I should do, which we learned from the sword in one hand. Or we will cut a stramazzone. We use a dritto stramazzone to get the hand. Um, so obviously these are depending on when you do this. If you are right on it, you go in like that. Or if you're a little bit behind, that's when you use a stramazzone to cut the hand. Our second thing here is going to be the half of geo to the hand. So again, to the dagger hand, and then a reverse squalimbo. So it's going to be one, two. It's a little bit harder with the sea legs. I can't really move as much as I want to, but one, two, ending up in Kodolunga Strata. I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to use my dagger to cover. And I'm going to do a Rikas Ujidas with Stramazzone to cover attack. So when this comes in, I want to use so one, two. It's going to line the body up with the right and left. This covers. This gets me lined up. This hits the inside of the arm. So again, right here. Option three is it gives the imbrocata. And like I was saying last time, it's going to be towards our outside, so right pack. If it goes to the inside, then we'll do something else. But they are going to basically go here. Which allows me, if they're going to that side, that allows us to do our outside slip. Guide them to our outside line, raise the hand, use the overhand reverse on hit the back of the neck. Finally, we have our good friend, the Huntin Falso. Now here we have a few options, depending on when I do this and whether this is a real attack or a feint. So I'll look at all three offensive actions. First, then we'll look at the three responses possible responses. Number one being snap over, hit, great. That's very unlikely to happen unless they know what they're doing. So more likely is going to be snap, cut to the head, or cut to the leg, depending on what they do, how tight they are in their action. Finally, we can do a feint and go to the leg with a reverso. 
So, um, this is going to be a little bit tricky. So I make sure that I'm not too deep in as I'm doing this. So I snap in. I'm going to start this action. And here's where we want to trade so I can cut with my right, or sorry, use, use my reverse to cut. So it's really important that I haven't gone too deep in here. So one, two, and three. Uh, this is definitely one we need to practice in person so you can really get a sense of the feeling for it. But it's essentially, instead of doing this, or this, that allows me to use, step around that way. Uh, and by using that left leg from behind, that allows me to kind of stay at my distance. Whereas if I took a small step in, I risk getting too close and getting caught up on the weapons. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep moving because they will try to hit that. Now, depending on when I deal with this, I have a couple options. If I deal with this right away, I can go right ahead and stab them. So while they're busy trying to stab me over my dagger, I will do the exact same thing to them. So I'm basically doing the third provocation in response. So I pick up that weapon, stab them in the flank, and relax. If I end up with the dagger part, um, this is where I have two options. So option one being I will use my dagger to cover and use entrare. So I defend with the dagger, and they go for a reverso. Sorry, this is where it actually gets confusing. So the feint is either a, so it's either. This is where things are very confusing. I read several times. So part A is the proving fossil succeeds. Part one, next part, is a, that's a real action and they turn it into a cut to the head or cut to leg on the same side. So like mangrito. And so that first thing I just did deals with all three of those options. I'm just gonna defend it and hit them before they can move on with their cut to the, cut to the head or leg. Now part two is it's either going to be a reverso to my head or a reverso to my leg. So when they do this feint, it can either be here, or it can be here. So now, if it goes high, I just transition to entry, just bring this over, shift towards my right, hit him in the chest. If it goes low, we know that we don't use our best friend. So when it's high, transition over to entry. When it's low, use the ridopio to cover. Now, Shingyali, we have three, so one more than last time. And two of these are quite similar, but one of them is a little bit different. So number one is going to be a thrust of the face, so stoccato. And depending on how much juice they get and what kind of defense they respond with, which is going to be a false entrance case, it's going to be either a reverso to the leg, or the mandrito to the hand. So not dissimilar from the sword in one hand, which is in the previous video. So I'm going to come in, thrust to the face, and cut to the leg, and get out of the way. So if I get a little bit too much of a little bit too zealous in their pushing, so it's kind of doing that. If they're covering pretty tight, I'm just going to throw a very quick, very sharp cut 
this starts only to the wrist. So we're going to take this all the time. I cover this thrust, trade. I gotta make sure I'm moving these at the same time. So I can hit that wrist with that action, with that cut. Uh, so now, as my response, I want to use my dagger to defeat this, and then use a Breeding Arts Wooded Dog here to follow up. So if I'm on the receiving end of this, I'm going to use this. And depending on what they do, it doesn't really matter. I will use a Ridopio to respond, followed by Nipokata. So they come with that thrust, I defend with this. It'd be pretty difficult for them to do the Stramazzoni unless I did this. Then I'm kind of asking for it. But if I'm doing this, this is a great response opportunity for me to use the Ridopio. Second one is just to go right ahead and use a stun on something to our hand. So here, because the way we're standing, this is actually a pretty nice target. So you come in very similar to what we did with uh, Colombo Stretta. Very similar action. And I have a fairly similar response, except because I'm here and I can double these up, I'm actually going to use Entry Guard. And steps. This is one case where we use entry guard to something that's coming against a mandrito. And I can do that because I'm so far to their outside. Because they have to be coming to this side, they won't be coming to this side. Uh, if they were, then face guard as we see in the defense section. Finally, we have a faint in Punta Rosa, which turns into an impro so a smarter version we did with the sword in one hand. So we're going to fake which means no feet. They respond with their false edge. That's our cue to turn that into a Vilpio, which becomes a Vocata, which becomes a Stanamazone. So we extend, they cover, come, rest, get out of the way. As my response, I will beat the falsage, and we're going to use the Rigasso de Opio again. So it's never, that's always going to be an option for me, because this turns very easily into that, as we've seen many times. So when the Pundras comes in, I use my falsage, they turn it up, that's okay. I will do essentially the same thing back to them. Finally, we have our two unicorn positions, so right and left. Um, these are fairly straightforward, and I'm going to be trying to use an imbrocata, or a real or feigned, to draw a response. So our first one is going to be imbrocata to the left hand. So just to kind of hit the, the top of the wrist there. Now I can also use that and throw a Drigo uh, uh, So I'll start this and to finish the action. I'll do another one of those. So one, two. So much just hanging out there, it's kind of weak position. Against this, because they're going all the way over here, I can actually slip that. So I'm just going to extend my arm out. So as it's coming down, I'm going to reach it out and cut from behind my shoulder. Now, if we're aiming really high up here, that's not going to work. If it's coming down to my wrist, as it should be, I actually can guide that and just walk around. Option two is they do the, there's some kind of here. So this is more of an invitation to kind of see what happens. So do that same action, but transition back. So I can kind of play with these two. So do the one where I'm actually hitting it, or do the one where I'm transitioning back, jingyali that way. Now as my response here is I'm going to faint on my own. 
So while they're busy doing this, I'm oh, sorry, this faint, I can faint, see what they do, and then follow on whatever makes sense. Cut, thrust, inside, outside, doesn't really matter. Finally, we can faint an impacata uh, to the body and then throw a mandrito to the hand. So, meaning, faint to that, to there, and then throw to the left hand. So I go high, make it the raised hand. That's my cue to come around and hit down with my free toe. And here, so as they do this faint, I can kind of move my dagger a little bit. I don't need to do too much. So I'm not going to move my feet, but I will move this as that mandrito comes in. I will step back and hit a hit the hand with a mandrito squalipo. Finally, Kuru Ar. Guardia. Guardia di Anicorno. The left foot forward, sinistra. We have two more options. Is we can do this gathering step again. So, and this is kind of designed to see what they're going to do. So, not too to someone from this. Only if it's being here is that this is in fact linear because we are already lined up. So I'm going to see what they do. Now this one's a little bit easier to make it uh, uh, harder to see the body move because I'm already quite uh, in this straight line. So as long as I'm not going up and down, this should be fairly difficult to see, to perceive. So, and then again, if they don't do anything, that's my cue to go on. Uh, so. Basically what I'm looking for is I do something and whatever that is, I use my dagger to cover it and step around and hit with a imbrocata, which is our basic defense from here. Uh, what I should do is if someone's doing this to me, aim for that left hand. So as they take that step forward, hit, and that, move on to the next thing. Finally, we can do a faint thrust and imbrocata. Ah, uh, sorry, and so faint thrust, so imbrocata, and throw a mandrin high or low. Here we kind of have two options. Well, one, one basic option here. One basic option. So I faint, cut high, Cut low. So I'm not really going to deal with the faint. So he says, I don't move my feet, but I'm going to move my hand in some way so he'll do the next thing. Otherwise, I'll get hit. So he does the imbrocata. Looks like he's no, I know he's going to do this. This cut high, this cut low. As he does that, I'm essentially using the canopy principle, canopy principle keeping this high and hitting to the inside of the wrist. So that covers it for the provocations from Kodu, uh, the sword and dagger. We're gonna do, like I said, in the previous video, we're gonna do a big recap of all of these, do the half one class, half the next, and then next class, we will pick up a different secondary meaning, meaning our big old piece of cloth. So, We'll look for that in about two weeks' time.